we went there specifically to cut dubs, right? But, you know, say I, I'll give you an example. Say I got there at nine o'clock in the morning mm. or early because, like, Chris used to get in early, you know mm. what I mean? And Chris would say to me, boy, can he get in early? And I'd da 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 you know what I mean? So we'd get in early. But you get in early and your dubs are finished cutting at, like, half, half nine, but more people are coming in. Stop it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you might, you might stay there till midday, right, just yeah. chatting with the man them, you know what yeah. I mean? Collecting more dubs. Now you've run out of money because, like, you know, your, your little three, four hundred pound yeah. that you had to spend on dubs, that's not done now. Chris has took that already. Because right? the dubs are coming in, there's yeah, because you're there's waiting pe- and blowing. There's people coming in, you know what I mean? So you'd go for lunch, there's calf down the road, a few of the, you and a couple of the man them will go and get some food, come back now, there's more man in music house, you're hearing more music, and you're in, like, say, like, for instance, um, Doc Scott come down, and Scotty's cutting a tune. Oh, yeah. And I say to him, Doc, can I get that? And he say, yeah, man, yeah. So that's another dub you've cut, but you ain't, you ain't got the money for it, but you, you're cutting it. And then um, <laughs> then is, you'd Ed Rush or, or someone would come in and yeah. you'd hear Ed Rush tune now. Yeah, and, yeah. Or, or, and then you say, Ed, we say, man, yeah, yeah, you can get peace, you know what I mean? And yeah. oh. now you owe music house about 300 <laughs> quid. <now. laughs> you know what I mean? Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Alrighty, oh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer <laughs> Podcast, back in effect, how's that? Thank you to everybody that's consistent in following and watching and enjoying the content that we provide. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the irregulars, originals that got the Television app. If you don't know about it, it's the sport and art. Music and street culture free download for all your content and uh, street culture sports. <sighs> Hold tight, Strange Station, all the other affiliates, and uh, inside the house today... <sighs> Does this man need any more introductions? <laughs> Original junglist, loved by many, um, unquestionable, undeniable pioneer in the jungle, junglist movement into the drum and bass world. Oh my God, can he get inside the place? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and fresh off the plane from Canada. Yeah, yeah, well, it was a, it was a mad trip. We got back yesterday, um, but it was just headache after headache coming back because of all the... Uh, all the um, staff shortages and is it staff shortages? Yeah, I think it is thing. because like when we when we was going, we had problems going as well with security. You know, um, not a problem with security, but in the sense that security. You know, when you go through security and they yeah. scan your bags and all that, and it just took long. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah, just yeah. long, long, yeah. long. You know, what I mean, even the fast tracks was it was just taking long. You know, what I mean, yeah, so yeah. we had problems going there and um, coming back. Toronto Pearson Airport wasn't that bad security wise, mm. but it was the way they put us on standby. Um, you, unannounced. You unannounced. Know. We thought we was coming home, and then also when I see standby on the oh, ticket, right. I just said, "Jesus, we got to do something here." You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. go home. Otherwise, can, I wouldn't can, be, can I wouldn't we indulge in what you actually did, though, Kenny? Right. Let me tell you about it's what like we done. Now, right. <laughs> First of all, my girl, she's got diabetes. Mm-hmm. Right. She's got the pump and everything. What's on her name? Arm. Uh, K, Kay, Big up K, hold that K. Casals, Casals, call her Casals. Big up Casals. Killer Casals in the southern. Right. Come on, we know you're on the. We know you're in the ride. Right, but Come anyway, um, she uh, she's got diabetes, diabetes, mm. and uh, she's got the pump and everything, you know, and everything else on your phone and all that. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> sorry. So, um, we was both putting arrows. What can we do? So I said, hold on, I got this. Don't worry. All right. So when you go to the counter, you you present your standby ticket, mm-hmm. and they um, put it down, they say, oh, we'll call your name when the seat becomes available, mm-hmm. right? So, but I didn't even need to get to that stage. I just said to the woman, listen, excuse me, um, my girl, she's got diabetes. We're on our last legs with the insulin. We've only got a little bit left and she needs to get home tonight. You know what I mean? Uh, so the woman said, who's your girl? And I went, she leaned over and she looked over and I went, her over there, sitting down over there. The wanting with, eyes of yeah. pain and fear. And Kaz was like, this, <sighs> giving all that, you know what I mean? <laughs> And the woman went to went. The woman just said, "Okay, no problem." 
and straight away I got my pass and the geezer behind me said, how did you do that? You know what I mean? He looked, he didn't say it, but he looked at me like, say, how did you do that? You know what I mean? And I just laughed. I just walked off. <laughs> so anyway, Kenny Ken, what do you want to know? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the next time, the next bit now is the queue is long to get mm -hmm. on the plane, right? It's like long as I can see, right? Mm -hmm. And we're thinking, they're putting announcements over the um, Tanoi saying, uh, can you please, if you've got any baggage, if you don't mind putting it in the hold because there's not going to be enough room on the plane because the plane's packed and blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? So I ain't, putting my, I ain't putting my laptop in the hold, no way, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not putting nothing in the hold, you know what I mean? So You just never know, do you? Yeah. Anything so we, could happen. We said, well, good thing we didn't because I didn't even get my bag, you know what I mean? Didn't get his bag neither, ladies Didn't get my bag, you know what, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, we see the queue and I, I said to her, she said to me, Ken, just grab my arm. And then we're limped to when they announce for the um, <laughs> for the children and people who need assistance yeah. to board first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she grabbed my arm, and she, and we we hobbled over to the to the <laughs> as you go through. And I said, "Excuse me, can we get on the plane now? Because she's got that. She needs to sit down. She's got diabetes, and she's having a hypo, yeah, and yeah. she needs to sit down oh, right now." Oh my goodness! And the woman just took one yeah. look at Kate Castles and just said. Yeah, well, yeah, of course yeah. you can. And we went on the plane and we was like, oh, yes. Total and utter. <laughs> you know what I mean? You result. have to blag, sometimes you have to blag these things, you know, because otherwise, if we had to go to the back of that queue, yeah. we wouldn't have had no no room for our bags. It would have been so uncomfortable. And, mm. You know, so we just got on the plane first. We got home and then we got to Heathrow Airport. I'm waiting for my bags to come through because I bought a new outfit for today. I bought mm. some new heavy Jordans, mm -hmm. new t everything. I bought everything to come here today. And you know those Canada limited runs. You know you don't just get them. On exactly. Any, you know you, exactly. That's part of the sneaker culture. I as went well. to a shop called Od Od Ods in 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 Toronto. It's yeah. Just pure Jordans they sell in there. Forget Foot Locker. Is that the that. one where Much Music? There's a store where Much Music. Yeah. Is. So, yeah. It's near there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro, yeah. That's a wicked yeah, sneaker yeah, shop. Yes. Still there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, right. yeah. 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 So I went in there. Spent about, I don't know, eight hundred dollars on yeah. a couple of pairs of shoes, one yeah. for me, one for her, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um I said, right, this is for Kid Ken, I don't know. My <laughs> shoes to bust everything, you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Cause I clock everything when they come <coughs> in, you know. <laughs> They're still in Toronto, mate. Oh my case didn't even come through. It's still in Toronto. Bro. You know what I mean? It's got her shoes, my <laughs> shoes. All that dirty washing, all the whole heap of other stuff what I bought, you know what I mean? It's just in Toronto. Life has a way of dealing karma in a particular fashion. Yes, isn't it? yeah. <laughs> right, right, you skank the plane, but you ain't getting your case. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, though, you know, you made lemonade out of lemons. You know, you, it could have been a lot worse. And it could have been a lot worse. But it, I mean, the, the whole trip in in all, like actually playing in Toronto was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. Mm. You know, people came out. The club was packed. Mm. You know, um, the system wasn't up to my expectations. Mm. You know, but I just I didn't let that phase me. You know yeah. what I mean? At first, it was giving me problems. The first fifteen minutes. Mm. Then you know you give yourself a kick up the ass, didn't you? And you mm. say, "Come on now, sort this out." You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And I sorted it out. Even the crowd was with me, though. Even they yeah. knew what the problem was. Two fifty you know I mean? was it? Two fifty, three hundred people. About, yeah, that's about full? yeah, about two fifty, about three hundred, and it's full. Bro, and and a headline act as well. No yeah. other. It's not one of them like university style yeah, just lists me. of yeah. I mean, I feel when I go to Toronto, I've done more than that. I've done like like nearly over a thousand. Just me, the headline. That's so you sick. You know what I mean? Come on, Kate. I mean, a lot of the, they love their jungle in Toronto. So yeah, they do. not just me, but like any yeah. DJ worth his sort goes yeah. to Toronto yeah, and yeah. he's got a name, he will most probably pack out the venue. You know and, oh, I mean? and big up SS as well. Because yeah, I think that's when we were last doing a couple of Torstens yes, together. Yes, yeah, there, we went there, yeah, with SS, right. you know. Like when we went there with SS, when we was doing the World of Drum and Bass tours, yeah. all the clubs were jam packed. Oh, I love you know that what I mean? tour. Those tours you know? were so informative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd done one for him about three or four years ago. Mm. And I thought to myself, I'm getting too old for this. For the uh, repetition of the... Just the mm. getting up and getting on planes and then going to the venue and then you do a late set and then mm. you've got to you've got to get back to the hotel, you've got two hours, three hours sleep Hurts, and you've got to go yeah. back to the um, airport again. And, yeah. you know, it's all right, three or four gigs. Mm. But on the World of Drum and Bass Tour, you know it ain't three or four gigs. No. They'd you be, know what I mean? Yeah, and, and they also, they... Revolve as well, like some last minute you might have a cancellation there, but then one you get another one somewhere else. So yeah, even yeah. the itinerary moves. and that messes up. Yeah, that messes up things as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now that club is not happening no more. Yeah. So what do we do? 
Yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it puts a spanner in the works big time. Yeah, you know? big time. I remember being in Cincinnati, I think, a rest in peace, Skibber, because we had a wicked afternoon. It cancelled. Yeah. But we went to, like, this kind of gas town district. Yeah. And we were just in this bar where people were watching baseball, I think. Yeah, yeah. We were just drinking yeah. and vibing. You can make the best yeah. out of Oh, yeah, you do. You have to. You have to, yeah. really. Don't you? you have to turn an L into a W, don't you? you know yeah. I mean? So, you know. And yeah. so far as technical spec and what can go wrong, I mean, we're talking to, to a seasoned vet of someone that helped kind of forge the, the 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 landscape of jungle of its time. So, you know what I mean? Like, you're dealing in, okay, yeah. the base might but not be working, but let me just put my engineer head on here. Well, that's what it was. The yeah. base wasn't working and, like, we never had no base. Ah. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we never had no base and... Um, I thought to myself, right, how am I going to do this now? Because a lot of the, you know, jungle, drum and bass, you have to have bass, you know what I mean? Boom, boom. But what I've done, I played tunes that I knew, even if the bass line wasn't there, they could still have it. Mm. You know what I mean? So Mm. I kept it on that level. So I went into my old school selection and just kept it on that level, you know what I mean? And it was popping off in there, you know. You would have thought the system was banging, you know what I mean, the way they was going. So... You know, I was happy in the end. You know what I mean? Oh, God, I love that. You now you made me want to come to one of your raves. Like, um, oh, by the way, uh, Harry Shotter. Uh, sends Harry his Shotter. Reg- yeah, sends yeah. his regards to you. Um, love Harry Shotter. Yeah, I've been to him. He loves you I've got too. a lot of respect for Harry because, like, you know, <clears throat> Skibbity, rest in peace, was the first man that introduced me, w- w- talk, told me about Harry Shotter. Yeah. We was in Australia. I think it was the same year when me and you was at there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, was yeah. in Australia. We was touring Australia mm-hmm. and Skibbity was in my room and he's, we'd, I'd stayed out because I was a party animal back then. Mm-hmm. So I'd stayed out and was getting mashed up somewhere. Mm-hmm. Got back to the hotel, to the apartment in Perth and uh, Skibbity was just sitting there with his headphones on and I walked into the apartment, you know, just flying high, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I said, Skip, what are you doing, man? And he went to me, yeah, you've got to come and listen to this guy, man. I said, what guy? He said, Harry Shotter. This is before Harry even came on the scene, you know what really? I mean? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough. That's all right. And uh, he said to me, you've got to listen to this guy, man, Harry Shotter, Harry Shotter. And he was chatting on hip-hop then. That's right. So I listened to the guy, I listened to him, right? And I said, blood, this geezer's a fire, you know what I mean? The way he was just... Yeah. With the lyrics and that. And the next thing, you know, Harry's just bust on the scene, you know what I mean? And I, I've always had respect for him because he's done his work. Mm. He's, he's in the grind, mm. 100%, you know what I mean? And, you know, he was he, he just got accepted by all the other top MCs, mm. you know, because sometimes, you know, when you're a new talent, mm. sometimes people kind of kind of shun you a bit because you're taking their light, you know what I mean, kind of thing, yeah. you know what I mean? But There's a lot of, there's a lot of feet on the stage. Isn't yes, people don't yeah. like being trodden but on. But Harry didn't get that. No. Harry just came straight. Everyone accepted him, mm. you know what I mean? This little white boy from Kent Mm-mm. just came in there and started busting up the place, mm. you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, it was all good, man. I've got a lot of it. Every time I see Harry, he shows me enough respect, you know what I mean? He loves it. And, and there's very few people, man, like you are heralded with so much high regard and love in this scene, man. I mean, I was I telling, so. I bro, so. when I was telling people that you were coming on, I swear to God, like, because I've got some mates down the road that are doing some graph at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I told them just as they're about to put paint to wall, oh yeah, Kenny Ken's coming over. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the how real it is. But you know what? You know what? Some people say to me, a lot of people have said this to me over the years, right? They've said to me, like, um, because I'm just humble. I just go on, I'm not, I don't go on like I'm some top DJ and whatever mm. you I'm just Kenny mm-hmm. you know Kenny Del Sol that's me mm-hmm. you know what I mean and you know I don't really go on like how how do you go on when mm. you're a top DJ how mm. should you act when you're a top yeah, DJ you know I what I mean you. you know so I just do me mm. you know and a, pe- a few people have said to, to me over the years but you're Kenny Ken you should be this you should be that you should be but I carry myself how I carry myself. Yeah, and I think there's a handful that is very similar. I mean, Nicky Black Market, for sure, holds the very same, nice to be important, important to be nice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, don't get me wrong, I love the respect I get. I love the, you know, the love I get off the ravers and that. I love all that. Who Mm. doesn't? You know what Mm. I mean? But, you know, at the same time, it doesn't really go to my head. Mm. Even when I was coming through the ranks, you know, as like back in the late 80s, Mm. early 90s, you know what I mean? It never once got to my head because I, all I was interested in was playing my music, doing a good job, mm-hmm. and then having a good rave up after. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, let's, well while we're on the subject, <laughs> let's take it there. So let's go back to these times because for a lot of us that were mere like, well, I wasn't even allowed. I was too young for the rave, but yeah. I'd be a- avid tape packs. Yeah, yeah. Because you yeah. guys came in from the um, offshoot of uh, hardcore. Yeah. Now we we era. started. <clears throat> 
sorry. We started in, um, we started, uh, when I started raving, it was Acid House. That's right? it, yeah. And I used to go to a lot of Acid House parties, a lot of um, like Sunrises, Energy, Biologies, and all, all the early parties, mm. you know, not all of them, but most of them I've been to, you know. And um, one day I was, at, I think it was at a Sunrise Rave, mm. and Groove Rider and DJ Bones was playing. And the way the set they played that day, right, I just said to myself, I want to do this. Wow, really? You know, you just I want to be up there. I want to be up there doing what they're doing. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It what was kind just, of what kind of music was it? It was house, but acid what, but, house, techno, techno, more techno like, stuff, like techno, the kind um, of stuff you'd hear on a mixtape of its time. Yeah, 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 yeah techno, okay. um, European techno, Chicago, uh, Detroit techno. You know, they was playing nice. across the board. You know what I mean? And but the way they was bouncing off of each other, groove and um, bones. You know, that's it. Always sticks in my head, and I thought, oh, I want to be like them. And then I saw Carl Cox play. At, uh, I think it was Ooh, the Sunrise, another and he OG. tore down the place as well. You know what I mean? And very, very clever yeah, DJ. That clever man, DJ, yeah. yeah. And like he, I saw him, and I just thought, I want to do this. And at the time, I was working on London Transport, right? And I was working at Oxford Circus Station. Right. So Black Market Records was just around the corner. And I used to know Stafford and them who used to work in there from the business before Nick. Before Nick, wow, right. And um, I used to go in there, me and Stafford had, had a little, we used to get on really well, you know what I mean? So every time I used to go in there, I wasn't even DJing, but I had my little box yeah, yeah. With, my, with my white labels and all that in there, like one off. So you were an avid fan? You were yeah, I was a fan of the music. Into it, yeah. I was collecting it, but I wasn't really DJing, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. So I was just collecting the music. Mm. Then when I, when I finally got it into my head, 100%, I want to do this, mm. because even though I just told you I saw Groove and um, Bones, do their thing, and it, it made me want to do it. Mm. It wasn't hundred percent in me to do it. Yeah. So I, I was collecting the music, collecting yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Did you and ever do pirates? You did. Didn't yeah, you? I done pirates, Centre Force, um, yeah. Dance FM. Yeah, yeah. You know, I done a couple of pirates, but my main thing was um, when I dis did decide I wanted to DJ, I gave up my job on London Transport, which was a good job. Mm. I took a chance. You know what I mean? And. Um, just used to blag it with the promoters, say, listen, I can play better than him. Mm. Give me a chance, man. I can yeah, play. It was yeah, yeah. Dave and um, uh, Carl and Dave from Crazy Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The story of Dave's Spells, yeah, husbands yeah. and Crazy Labs. I've been told, yeah. On the... In uh, Chelsea. Yeah. Used to go there on a Sunday in Chelsea, in Kings Road. And uh, one day, oh, I'm not going to say the name of the DJ because I don't want to disrespect nobody. You know what I mean? <laughs> but this guy was playing his music. And I said to myself, I play better than that at home. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, so I went and told, I, went and I said to Dave, the promoter, I said to him, Dave, or was it Carl? One of them, I said to them, listen, I can play better than this. Give me a chance, man. You know what I mean? I can play better. And they said, all right, then come down to Busby's. Nice. And uh, we'll give you, you know, play yeah. for free. No wages, nothing. Just come and play. And we we'll see, and if you play good, we'll see about keeping you on, you know what I mean? Head to the grindstone, work. Get yeah, in. but little did I know that when I was going down, I've said these stories, I'm in time, but little did I know when I was going down there to play, I thought it was just me, but it wasn't. It was Jumping Jack Frost and um, Ray Keith as well. So now I've got some stiff competition now, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the three of us all played good. All of us busted up the place, so they kept the three of us. Wow. You know what I mean? They kept Because mm. they couldn't distinguish who was the... We all done our thing, you know what I mean? Mad. And they kept the three... And they, True to their word, they kept us, you know. So that was the, that was kind of like my into the big time. Because yeah. obviously, I think before then, I was playing for Labyrinth. Yeah. For Sue and Joe, who used uh -huh. to have respect to them because they, I've like, got total respect for the pair of them yeah. because, you know, they took me on when I could just about mix, but they was giving me work every week. You've got you know to find I mean? a route in, I mean, <coughs> and by any means necessary. Yeah. S sometimes... It and I say it's quite a lot on the podcast. It's it's, it's not just the skill; it's the work ethic. Yeah, yeah, you got to put in. You got to put in that grind, man. Because mm. like at the end of the day, if you think even now, you know, mm. I don't sit on my laurels. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think, oh, I'm Kenny Ken, and I'm going to carry on getting work mm. because I'm who I am. Mm. You know, you still have to bring something to the table mm. because there's a lot of young DJs out there now who are really good. Mm. You know, and that's who you're playing against, basically. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Totally. And, uh, you know, if you can't hold it up against them, and remember, they're they're the record box era. Yeah, that's right. Like they, so it's easier for them to mix two bang, tunes. Bang, bang. Yeah. What was the like? What was the landscape like in in clubland for its time? But you know, because there was that transition, 
And I only remember it as somebody who was a total and utter fanatic about the whole mixtape culture. But there was this seismic shift where the attention on Jungle, it took a new turn. I, I, rem I remember, obviously, the, the reggae influence was supercharged with it, but then the hip-hop thing, graffiti played a part. Yes. In yeah, the, and yeah. I know you're a graffiti fan yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. am, yeah. Did yeah. I, 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 well, it, Goldie, when Goldie came to... Yeah. Um, when I first met Goldie, you know, I went up his house a few times when he used to live in Camden and that, and, you know, he's just top graffiti yeah, man, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And like, you know, so graffiti had had a big part to play in mm. the music, mm. in all all the electronic music, mm. you know what I mean? Not just drum and bass and jungle, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, when the music first came out, I'm going to be totally honest, when I first heard the first, because we was, I was used to fall to the floor. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. That's what yeah, I was yeah. used to, right? Yeah. So when the first Jungle track came out, because they used to, they before Jungle came out, it was called Jungle Techno, around about the same time as Hardcore. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right? Yeah. So it still had the fall to the floor, but it had the Jungle beats going. Like mixed. almost like a almost like a breakbeat, Amen, gun in the background. Yeah, 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 yes, right, exactly. And um, so that I loved because mm. it still had the fall to the floor in mm -mm. it. But then when they started, when Jungle. When I first heard, the, I think it was Groove one day, I was talking to Groove, and Groove played a couple of tunes at Roast, oh. but it never had the fall to the floor in it. How did that feel? Oh, yeah, I just can't even... To even... I get goosebumps thinking about it, because when you hear a classic, classic jungle tune, and it's just, there's not enough, there's not enough kicks. Yeah, exactly. That's, like, dangerous. Like, it feels like you're... Oh, it's, you're hanging on the edge yeah. of your seat. Well, when Groove, when, when Groove played the first... He played a couple of tunes... I mean, he was having a little chat. I said to him, Groove, I can't really get my head into this. Really? It was yeah, all I, too I just different. told him straight, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, because I was so used to the fall to the floor and the jungle yeah. techno, you know yeah. what I mean? But then someone gave me a tune. Oh, what was the name of the tune? Oh, I can't remember the name. Of the... But anyway, it was a jungle tune, mm. like early jungle tune. Mm. Gave me the tune and I fell in love with it. Really? And that was my, oh, I can't remember the name of the tune now. He'll come oh. to you. He'll come to you. But anyway, and. They gave me this tune. I think it was either Dance Master or or um, Para gave me a tune, and they said Kenny can hold this tune here, right? And I played the tune that Roast smashed up the place. You know what I mean? In amongst the hardcore techno. Yeah, stuff? because we were still playing hardcore. We were still playing um, little bits of techno. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was still that was still getting played because there was it was still going through that transition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of going from from like uh, hard like from Acid House house and Techno into mm. Jungle Techno. Mm. That's that's why they called it Jungle Techno, yeah, yeah. because they were still playing the Techno beats, but with the Amens or whatever yeah. going through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was still going through that transition, you know what I mean? But mm. yeah, and then I just got hooked on Jungle after that. You know morphed, what I mean? Morphed into this thing. What was it like with the audience when... Because obviously, boom, 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 boom. No, with the, funny enough, the audience loved it. Did they? Yeah, because when Groove used to play the early stuff, mm. this was before I got into it, yeah. you know, they, I think it was about one week Groove played played what he played and I wasn't really feeling it. Mm. And then it was about two weeks later, I got a tune off of somebody, mm. off a of para or a dance master. One of them two gave me a tune. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in it. Mm. You know what I mean? Hooked. Now I'm watching what Groove's playing now because I'm thinking I want that tune, I want yeah. that tune. You know what I mean? You know what, what, was, what was Groove's point? Because it was so, from inception, this was such a new thing. There was probably, I mean, arguably for Groove to be jump, he's always quick to jump on this. Yeah, things, right? Ryder's always quick to jump on shit, man. He Trust probably, me. Yeah, he probably he, only he, had like three or four songs that had that same nah, thing. No, he had a whole heap. Really? Yeah, because it wasn't just them man there that was making Jungle. It was like, you had the, the Simon Baseline Smiths and the yeah, SS's and... All them up and Doc Scott and yeah. you know, you got all all the man them making tunes. And you know throwing what I mean? them down to Groove. And at the end of the day, Groove Rider was the man to give your tunes to. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, everyone wanted Groove to have the tune. So if you wanted to hear new new back then, if you wanted to hear the newest stuff, you make sure you heard Ryder set. Because God, you guarantee you he's gonna play stuff that you you know you ain't heard yeah. before, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you know, I'd always listen to his set. I think, boy, that tune's banging. But the yeah. good thing about Groove though is he wasn't the kind of, well, towards me anyway, he wasn't the kind of DJ that would hide his, hide his music. No, no, that's it, yeah. If I said to him, Groove, what's that? Because I remember there was a tune called Get Up To My Groove, right? Uh, um, 
he played it at Astoria. It's not, it wasn't a jungle tune, it was a house tune. No, it right? sounds about right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and he played it at Astoria, but it was a white label, right? No, it wasn't a white label, sorry. It was a yellow label, right? Mm. But I couldn't see what the tune was. I couldn't see what it was. I said, Groove, what is that tune? And he just took it and showed it to me. Straight down Black Market. Yo. A couple of days later, yeah. Stafford, I need this tune. Get, and I got the tune. Because an element of it is actually him showing the right DJs the thing. Yeah, and yeah. And then bringing up the profile of the I song. never had that problem with Groove, you know what mm. I mean? Like so, Certain DJs wouldn't even show you the tune. They just wouldn't even tell you. Mm. But for some reason, me and him just clicked and he showed me the tune. Mm. And I went and got the tune. You know what I mean? So... You know, you could say I was a Groove fight, Groove, a heavy Groove Rider fan mm. back then. You know mm. what I mean? Because oh, I big up Groove Rider. Yeah, yeah, and Fabio. enough respect. And Bones. Fabio, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, enough respect. You know what I mean? Um, there is this hierarchy, and I'm sure because it exists in hip hop, it certainly exists in grime, and it, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> to my to my understanding, yeah, it does. It does exist. It does exist. There is a hierarchy in drum and bass, but. Different people have different opinions of who that hierarchy is. <laughs> it depends who's talking, right? Isn't it? <laughs> right. And, right. Right. You know, I don't really, um, I don't get involved in that. You no, know what I mean? No, because no. it's not in your nature. I'm just right? happy to just be working and doing yeah. what I love. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't really. I'm not bothered if you think I'm at the top or at the bottom, mm, because okay, where, yeah. wherever you think I am, I'm out there. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm doing my thing. You know what I mean? So mm. it, it doesn't bother me about. It doesn't even bother me like if I'm on a, if I'm on the bottom of a flyer. And like one week I played at a rave and I was at the bottom of the flyer. And all the DJs above me, one of them I knew, but the others I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt a bit disrespect disrespected, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I said, oh, I'll show you on the night. You That's know what right. I mean? Yeah. And I went down there and I'd done my thing and the promoter was well happy. He was just like, Oh, oh, we've recorded your set. Can we put it on our page because we want to, mm -hmm. you know, we want to show the the list the punters how good the rave was and rare. I mm -hmm. said, go and put it on there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, you know, at the end of the day, it it, it doesn't bother me when my name is on the flyer because yeah. I know it's about what you do at it's the one dance. Of them things, isn't it? As well, because it's all about when people discover you to how much your pedigree lies yeah. within there. Your name being on the flyer mm -hmm. is not going to get you tons of work. No. All right. It's what you do mm. in the party. Thousand percent. It's what you do when you're working. Mm. That's what's going to get you to work. You know what I mean? It's how you leave, how, how, in what condition you leave the ravers mm. what condition after your you set. Come on. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, the mixtape culture within John Bass. I mean, I guess it was a help and a hindrance in many respects, but it was the modern day social media. It was the modern day Napster or LimeWire, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was like when they done the mixtapes back in the day, I mean, the first ones, who done it? Eclipse. There was a club called Eclipse. That's right, yeah. Right? And they was the, I think they was the first ones who started doing it. Mm. All right? And like, I got people from Scotland hearing about Kenny Ken. I mean, this is how it spread it across the, across the pond as well, like into mm, America right, and Canada yeah. because... You know, the Canadians and the Americans and Australians and the Europeans were coming over to the UK mm. to come to these parties mm. and they was taking the mixtapes back with them. Mm. And then that's how it was spreading, you know what I mean? Because there wasn't right. no... Yeah. Um, I don't even think MySpace was was about then. No, 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 no. You know we're what talking I mean? Like before, this was before MySpace, you know before, what I mean? Yeah. And like, so that was, that was how the vibe was getting spread, either pirate radio or people just buying the mixtapes and taking them abroad and that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I mean, we used to grumble about not getting paid with the, you know, I mean, with the mixtapes and that. Mm. Most promoters paid, you know what I mean? Did they? Some didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was promotion for us mm. as well. Mm. You know, not just for their rave, but it was promotion for me and all the other DJs that mm. were around on that, at that era, you know what mm. I mean? So it was a good thing. Financially... It was kind of we we felt like certain people were ripping us off, mm. but the good side of it is it's promotion. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's how you had to look. I mean, how I'm talking now, I never looked it looked at it like that back then. I just mm. wanted my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. in when you think about it now, you, you're a bit older, a bit wise, and you think about it, man, that was the good promotion. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, and also although you. You didn't entirely get your money, and I know you know this, is, you don't get your money necessarily, but what you do get plugged into, like you say, is a whole wide audience. With, with, for mixtapes, obviously there's the, there's the following month's clubs and the following yeah. week's clubs, yeah. but they take a level of promoting to yeah, get exactly. people yeah, in yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when me, when, me, I mean, when me and GQ first went to Canada, 
I'm sure it was GQ I went with first. Yeah, it was Gary. Big it up was, GQ. Yeah, yeah, it was GQ. We Richard. went to um, we went to uh, Canada, Toronto, and they knew they had the because I won the heavy. Uh, what's it called? The Sound Clash. I won the Sound Clash. Jungle Sound Clash. Yeah, no, just casual, fucking <laughs> rock star. Right here. Come on. Son. Yeah, I won the I won the um, Sound Clash. Yeah. And uh, they had video with it. Come out on the video pack and everything. You know, video I mean? pack too. Yeah, yeah, everything. Oh, I still got yeah. a video at home. Nice. Still on the VHS as well. And um, when me and G got to Toronto, they had the video packs over there. They had the, the the tape packs and everything over no there already way. before we even got there. What? So they knew what they they knew what time it was. Yeah, they knew what time it was. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? And like, That's you know, something. the first few raves in Toronto when we went to Toronto. In fact, up till this day, the raves are always jammed. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I mean, COVID mashed up everything for everybody. But yeah, you know, I'm I've I was told this time when I went back to Toronto that I was the first international DJ since COVID mm. since they've at their lockdown, you know, this is what I was told by mm. the ravers out there. Mm. Oh, you're the first one we've had back and uh, can't wait to see the rest, like all the Groove Riders, the Mickey Finns, you know, and Jumping Jack Frost and Randall. Bro. You know, when are they coming over? And well, I said, don't worry, they'll be over. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? They'll be over at some point. Crazy devotees in drum and bass and jungle lane. Yeah. Mm. The, the other aspect of DJing with drum and bass and jungle is the, the, the dub plate culture, and the producer culture. Um, I said this to rap as well, and I, I think I said it to Bailey as well, because Bailey, oh my God, Bailey's just got like, he, he's a hoarder of this of this sort of content. But, you know, Bailey. it's just bonkers that, um, it's like ammunition. It's like your sound, sound boy ammunition, like it, it, you just get these dubs and you just, it, it serves is, the clubs, it serves Yeah, it. dub plate culture was brilliant, right? Because one, it, it, it you know, I've got a big up Leon and Paul, Leon, rest in peace. Yeah, rest um, in peace. You know, um, Paul and Chris at Music House. You know, them guys, that was like the meeting point mm. for all the DJs. Mm. No matter what part of the country you're mm. from. Mm. You used to come to Music House to cut mm. your dubs. We used to have the guys from Liverpool coming down to cut their dubs from Mad. Manchester, Scotland, oh, everywhere. everywhere coming down to Music House. And it was like a... A big meeting point, you know what I mean. So talk to me about that. What? So what? I, I, explain what the because because <coughs> Leon actually passed away on the day we did the Jump and Jeff Frost podcast. Who yeah, Leon did? Yeah, yeah, he right, on the okay. day. Um, so we didn't really get into it so deeply because obviously it was fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on in hindsight, retrospect, what, what was it about? Sound? What was it about that as a location that the the, the mix it was the uh, mastering? What was it like? What was and what was the vibe like there? Music, music ass was a place where. Um, you know, we went there specifically to cut dubs, right? But, you know, say I, I'll give you an example. Say I got there at nine o'clock in the morning mm. or early because, like, Chris used to get in early, you know mm. what I mean? And Chris would say to me, boy, can he get in early? And I'd da 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 you know what I mean? So we'd get in early. But you get in early and your dubs are finished cutting at, like, half, half nine, but more people are coming in. Stop it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you might, you might stay there till midday, Right, just yeah. chatting with the mandem, you know yeah. what I mean? Collecting more dubs. Now you've run out of money because, like, you know, your, your little three, four hundred pounds yeah. that you had to spend on dubs, that's not done now. Chris has took that already. Because right? the dubs are coming in, there's, yeah, because you're there's waiting pe- and blowing. There's people coming in, you know what I mean? So you'd go for lunch, there's a cafe down the road. A few of you and a couple of the mandem will go and get some food, come back. Now there's more man in music house, you're hearing more music, and you're in, like, say, like, for instance, um, Doc Scott come down and Scotty's cutting a tune yeah. and I say to him Doc can I get that and he say yeah man yeah so that's another dub you've cut but you ain't you ain't got the money for it but you, you're cutting it and then um, then <laughs> this you'd Ed is, Rush this or, is or someone would come in and yeah. you'd hear Ed Rush tune and, yeah, yeah. Or, or, and then you say Ed we say man yeah, yeah, you can get peace, you know what I mean? And yeah. oh. Now you owe Music House about 300 quid, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But the good thing about Music House is because he knew all the mandem was earning their money anyway, he'd yeah. say, yeah, don't worry about it, pay me next week or when you come yeah. down again. But you're not going to get another dub. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? They was cool like that, you know what I mean? And like, they didn't just used to do it for me, they used to do it for all the mandem, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, if they needed that help, you mm. know what I mean? And, you know, it was like a big meeting point. You know, you just, we, we went there, we just, we weren't just talking about dubs, we were talking about the scene in general. Mm. Oh, did you hear what happened to so-and-so last week? Oh, you know, just, it was like the, mm. the it was like the Facebook 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Community of drum place. and bass, yeah, jungle. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And but we was face to face though. Now we're chatting and we're talking about things and you know, it was just like it was the it was the hub music house, the main hub. I'm trying to think if there was anything like that in hip hop. I mean, it just doesn't really I mean, not from a social aspect of you know, the word and on the all street. the top all the top DJs would go there. Everybody would go there. Sometimes I'll give you an example. Sometimes I'd walk in there late, like about one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. From you see certain man sitting there, right, cutting dubs, you might as well go home because you know that they're going to be there for ages. Like, if you saw... Uh, name who? <coughs> give, me, give me an example of who that might be. All right, let me tell you an example. <laughs> Stories. Like, if you saw, obviously, Ryder, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you saw Groove sitting down there with skin and teeth, like, yeah. you know what I mean, right? And he's cutting his dubs, right? And there's only one dub room open. You go can home. either <laughs> chat shit with him, right? And maybe he might give you a couple of dubs or or... You think, no, you know what? Goo's going to be in there for ages, man. <laughs> Shit, Fuck I'll come it. back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. one, it was one of them things, not mm. just Goo. There's a few, man, if you saw them sitting down there, you'd think, well, you know what? Let me just come back later or mm. come back tomorrow mm. or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Or you stay there and just chat shit with them. You know what I mean? Pecking order, isn't it? Very interesting. Yeah, there was there was a pecking order at, um, at, uh, at Music House. And uh, I'd like to think that I was near the top. Yeah, you yeah, well, You know right, what I mean? Right, because, yeah. like, it's it wasn't so much... Where you where you were in the hierarchy of the jungle drum and bass mm. scene, it was how you got on with Chris and Paul, nice and 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 Leon. Yeah, you know what I mean. So if you got on, it depends how you was with them. Now me and Chris, and uh, me and uh, Paul, mm. which is Leon's dad, right, got on really well. So I could get practically anything. I could just <laughs> go down and hand okay. over a couple of dats. If I didn't have time, because not every day you could sit down there all day, mm, you know what I mean? Mm, so mm. I just leave three or four dats. I say, Paul, deal with that for me. I'll be back tomorrow or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's your call like that, mm. you know what I mean? You know, it, it it all depends how you got on well with them. Like, I mean, Swift Swift um, had a good relationship with Leon. So, you know, you get looked after accordingly. Mm. You know what I mean? It was like that, you know? But, um, yeah, Music House was the... I mean, there's nothing like that now. No. Except oh, for Instagram you. and Facebook. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, elements of the social side of the culture is missed. I think that also provides a bit of a handicap for people in, um, in a more expansive way to um, build rapport and conduct themselves. You know, your handshake's your business card. Yeah, and yeah. being in an environment yeah. where there is a gathering... Like when I think of the that quote unquote the pecking order, I mean there were so many dynamics, so many different characters in drum and bass. I mean I was thinking of Shy FX and Goldie, you know these two people. Yeah. They they kind of they run parallel, but they're very different kind yeah, of characters. Yeah, and then yeah. there's you, and then there's Jumper Jeff Frost, and there's Groove, and I mean you know the list goes on. Rap, um, Nicky, God. But when you put them all into a central place, it's super important to. You know, yeah, well, I, I I like to think that you know, like the names that you just mentioned, like Shy, like a lot of people say to me, um, like the other day about it was about a month ago, and uh, my mate called me and he says to me, Ken, I need to get these tunes to Shy, right? Mm. But Shy never picks up his phone, right? So I was like, I'll get Shy. He said, Ken, he's not going to pick up his phone. I said, Watch this, bam. Picked up his phone. Oh, God. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. See, now I know who to call Shy. Right. shy. See, ain't Shy. <laughs> shy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I get on with, I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I don't yeah. speak to Shy every day. No, but it's you. It's Ken. Right. I don't speak to him every month. Yeah. Right. But when I do decide I need to call him, yeah. he's never, ever, like, not picked up the phone. Yeah. I don't know why. We just get on really well. from Because, yeah. like, Shy was one of, when I, when, the, when I won the Sound Clash back in 94, yeah. He was one of the ones that gave me dub plates to play at the... So me and him got on well. I've been around his mum's house, where his mum used to live. Yeah. I've been around his mum's house and all that. So we had that oh, early relationship, so you know what good. I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. he's just out of respect. If I call him, he'll always answer his phone. Boys, it's boys, isn't it? Yeah, you know I mean? That's... Yeah, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, like I said, we, do, we don't see each other every, every day, every week, every month. Mm. I might see him a couple of times a year. Mm. But when I do see him, it's all love, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You know, same with a few other people, you know. You don't see them all the time, but you know that connection you've got mm. with them, you know, and, you know, like Randall, mm. Randall's my boy. I don't see Randall every day, you know, I don't speak to him every day. Mm. But when I see him, it's like we just see each other yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. You know what I mean? You know? Oh, yeah, I'm 
Uh, big up Leke, Aerosol. Oh, yeah, uh, Leke. Yeah, yeah, and hope you get well soon, brother. Yeah, man. I spoke to him last week as it goes. I yeah. found him because when I heard that he had his accident, yeah. I gave Terrible. him a call. I yeah. gave him a call because like, I don't go on Facebook a lot now. Yeah. And it was Miguel that said to me, have you heard about Leke? And yeah, I went, yeah. no. Random fool. Yeah, and she told his leg, me. ladies and gentlemen. So I said, well, look, mean? listen. I'm not writing nothing on Facebook because yeah. I don't want to go on there because if I start writing shit on Facebook, then people are going to yeah. expect me to be on there yeah. all the time. Yeah. So rather than do that, I called him yeah. and he explained to me what happened. And he said, Ken, I was just unlucky. Yeah, yeah that's you super unlucky. I mean? and we just, just got to be there, hold strong for him. Yeah, yeah. He said to me, um, this was like a couple of months ago, he goes, you know, it's cultural currency. That's what it is, cultural currency. As you get older in the music scene, yeah. you you develop... It, it, it's more than... It's, it's more I than know what he shape. means. I know what he means. I know what he means. Yeah, I'm coming I know from. What he means by cultural currency. Yeah, yeah. And so it, well, that's know, the shy effect effect. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the shy effects effect. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. like, you know, it's it's. I've never along the way. I've never. I can't remember ever having a bad, like vibe with another DJ or. Mm wanting to have a fight or argument, big argument or anything with another DJ, you know mm. what I mean? Mm. I've never, I can't remember. I mean, you know, contact me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Comment below. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I've never had a, I've never had that, you know what I mean? And mm. like, I just like to get on well with everyone because like, you know, my days of, you know, like fist fighting and all mm. that, that was before DJing, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, didn't know where to channel your energies. Yeah, so you're, like, yeah. you're on road now, yeah. you know, and like, you know, D, you have to stand up for yourself, yeah. you know what I mean? But in this game, you can't bring that to this game because, you know, mm. it, I, I, I realised that at a, mm. at a young, at, a, at the beginning of my career, mm. DJing career, I realised that you need to come off that road, man, shit, mm. you know, and just do your thing and just get into the music mm. and because you ain't impressing nobody. Mm. You know what I mean? You're just you're just making enemies. Where did you grow up? Where about you know? I grew up in East London, yeah. Hackney. So Hackney, you Hackney yeah, born I'm a Hackney right? boy. Yeah, I was, I was born in um, North London. Where else? In a uh, uh, Whittington Hospital. In uh, where is it again? Highgate, I think. Yeah, Highgate. Yeah, yeah, I was born in Whitt Whittington Lovely. Hospital. Yeah. Lived in North London, Stamford yeah. Hill for a while, and then um, moved to East London, Holly Street, in 1971. 71. Yeah. Um, Production. What's the process, my brother? What is it? What, what software do you use? What's the pickup? Right. What, so the, I've always the... used, I've always used um from from back in the day. We, I was using everyone had the Atari ST ST one forty. Yeah, is yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah right? And I remember that was always running out of memory, so you couldn't finish the tune, and you had to bounce this and bounce that to finish Constantly the tune. Constantly bouncing. Yeah, yeah, right. And no going back. Neither. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then from there I went to a, a on the Atari it was Cubase. Then from there, I went to the Mac. Uh, oh, I forget the name of the model of the Mac. This was before GS, G3 and all, G4 and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I went to a Mac anyway. I think it was a 9500, right? I went to a Mac. And um, that's when I, that was my first taste of Logic. And my mate Danny Styles, big up Danny Styles. Like right? Oh, yeah, big up Danny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny Danny taught me a lot. He taught me really, really a lot about Logic and how to use it mm. and... You know, and I took it, I soaked it all in, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've always been a Mac man, always been on Logic. People have tried to convert me to um, Ableton. Ableton okay. And uh, I've got Studio One as well. I've got it on my computer, but I don't use it because I always yeah, yeah. find myself going back to Logic. It's what you, what you know, know isn't it? It's what you know. Yeah, yeah. Go so it's what you know, form. yeah. People are saying, yeah, you should use Ableton because blah, 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 it's faster. And then, no, yeah, I yeah. should use Logic because yeah. that's what I know. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Go you know. You know. It's a different language. These these things, these operating systems. It's like you. It's literally Spanish and French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why should I? I mean, why should I change? Like, I'm talking about even even up to three weeks ago. Mm. My friend Modified Motion was talking. Nah, can you need to use Ableton? Why? Mm. Why? You know what I mean? It's, that's what I know. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And I, I've got to learn all the shortcuts again. I've yeah. Got to learn everything. It's, yeah, yeah. You know. So anyway, with updating the, operating systems as well. Like if you if I update and able to, I'm like. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, what I've started to do now. Back in the day, we used to we used to download plugins, yeah. right? And we used to download them all the time and load up the computer. Even you'd, you'd have five hundred plugins in your computer, but you're only using about four of them. Yeah, you totally. know what I mean? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's me all the time. <laughs> yeah, but now what I've done now is I'm, I buy my plugins now, mm. all of them. I buy all my plugins because I'm fed up of 
you know, my Dealing work the, crashing, my yeah, computer yeah, yeah. slowing down and all that. I hate it. So I buy all my plugins. The best one I bought recently was called, two I've bought recently. One's called um, Avenger mm -hmm. and the other one's called um, Sugar. Sugar? Yeah, Sugar is a, it's like a mastering um, plugin. Ooh. Really good, really fire, you know what I mean? Big up Alex P, because yeah. he's the one who told me about that, that Alex, one. yeah. Yeah, he's the one who told me about that. But Aye. that's what I use. That's, that's you know, I use Logic as my mm -hmm. um, door, you know. And uh, I've made a few tunes over the years. Like recently, we've done... Yeah, you have. <laughs> yeah. We made, recently, we've done a tune called Rid Em Up, me and my boys Beat Merchants. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it. And, um, that's on uh, Spotify now? Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, it's on yeah, Spotify yeah. now. And I've done that with the Beat Merchants. And my mate Jubs, he's one half of Beat Merchants. Mm. And big up Beat uh, Juice Man and, mm. and uh, Jubs. And, uh, but me and Jubs, we've known each other since mm. bloody 97, I think, mm. or something like that, 96. Mm. And um, Jubs came to me with the idea of Rid Em Up, right? He said to me, Ken, the boxing rhythm, mm. right? I want to do a tune with that. Mm. But he gave me the actual boxing tune. Really? Right? So he gave it, yeah. He gave me, no, the actual tune, the actual reggae tune, right? right and yeah. he wanted me to lift the instrumental off. Yeah. And make and use that as the intro, yeah. you know what I mean? And then come with a drop, right? Which is the classic kind yeah. of formula. Like. But I said to him, I said to him, Jules, we can't do that because we'll they'll they'll, yeah, yeah, they'll rob us late, you down, know what yeah. I mean? You know, they'll take that offline straight away, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So he said, all right, all right, leave it to me. So he must have went and done some inquiries about getting it licensed and that, and they just wanted some stupid money. So I said, I'll tell you what we do, we just recreate it ourselves. You know what I mean? We'll get the boxing rhythm, and we'll recreate the bass. We'll recreate all the elements ourselves. Hold on. So yeah. that isn't a sample? No, nah, no, nah, that's... Yo, nah. check the tune out. No. Nah. That is mind-blowing. <laughs> no, nah, I sat there. It took me It took me about... The bass line was easy yeah. because all I'd done was lift it off the bass and put it in Logic and got the keys, got the... Where yeah. the you know, we, we press And you the, can just twinkle yeah, it down. Yeah, and it's yeah, blah, 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 yeah. So I'd done that. So that was easy, the bass part, but the other bits was hard. Because you had to find sounds that are similar. Yeah. And then the crunchiness, the warmth. Yeah, the, 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 you have to the, find all that. You know what I mean? So. Well, there's a plug in <coughs> for them. There's a plug yeah, in for yeah. them things. And a, yeah. But it's labor intensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It took me about to get it right. Where, 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 where me and Jubs was, and Juice was totally happy. It took about a week. Jeez. You know, because I wasn't on it. Like, Which is reasonably quick, actually. When yeah, you think it, about it, what it is quick. I wasn't on it um, all day, every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when I did get on it, I wanted to get it right. And then mm. I sent Jubs. And they say, yeah, but Ken, what about that other bit? There's another bit that goes, or whatever, oh, you know what I mean? It's good that they're there, though, clocking it. And then he'd say, try and find that piece there. So a little bit we had to sample. I can't believe the real did that. Yeah. Rhythm. But most, all of it is just me sitting down in my studio and just recreating it. So if you're out there listening on Insta License, man, this is exactly yeah, what it's not. it's not no sample. And um, um, Ezzy, the singer, he sung the, um, he sung the vocals for us. You know what I mean? And then Jubs gave me the break, just gave me the break and said to me, right, put a beeline under that. You know what I mean? So we done the intro. Ezzy gave the intro to Ezzy. Mm. Ezzy sung the vocals for us. Mm. They gave that back to me and I said, right now I'll do the drop because I've got more of a vibe now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've got the vibe. And then I tried about two or three, maybe four drops before, we got, before I got to that one. And I sent it back to Jobs, and Jobs was like, yeah, man, yeah, that's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that's um, good. Let Brian hear it, yeah. Brian G. Brian was, like, all over it. You know good what I mean? Which, which was like, Brian oh, is God. really fussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If oh. Brian likes a tune, you know, you've got something because... Revelations like, in yeah. the podcast, is he? Is Big he fussy? Brian G, Jumping Jack Frost, yeah, all day. V Recordings, guys, Chronic. You know what I mean? But, mm. like, Brian was all over it straight away. And then Brian come with some other ideas, you know, about putting it on a 10 inch and all that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like we thought, yeah. So what we done, I done, I done the drum, in fact, I done all three of them really. Job's done the mastering for me. I done the, the drum and bass version. I done the jungle version and the reggae version. But the reggae version, Job's, I gave it to Job's and Job's done his bit on it as well. You know what I mean? So. And it worked. It was a good package because, like now, I've got people hitting me up on Instagram, reggae artists, not not um, drum and bass like reggae artists. Oh, that is so oh, yeah, big good. up for that tune, man. That tune is fire. So now we've done the next one, right? And you're doing it in the same f format. For, same format, right? That is right. Yeah, we've done um, so remember good. um, Heptones, baby. Right, we've done a uh, the baby tune, uh -huh. right? 
dun, dun, um, baby be true and I'll give my love to you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we done that, done the rhythm. I right, done the rhythm. Right? I sent the rhythm to Jubes. Replayed. Yeah, the replayed the whole thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, because laughing. I don't want no one to hit me up with no, no like, I've sampled it thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So replayed the whole thing. And then um, um, Jubes. Um, Jubs gave it to Ezzy. Ezzy sung it, and Ezzy sung it really good, right? He actually sung the baby, baby be true, and I'll give yeah, my word. It's super close. Yeah, he sung it really. He got it on point. You know what I mean, right? Mm. So anyway, I'm sitting in my yard, and then Jub said to me, "I see because I got WhatsApp on my lap on my um on my iMac, right? And I just see the thing pop up on like I got a message. I think Jubs, right? So I listen to it because the reason why I got um WhatsApp on my iMac is when people send me little demos. I can listen to it through my speak, main speakers. Of course, bang, bang. Instead yeah, of having yeah. it on your phone, because you can't hear shit on the no, phone. No, you know no, what no, I mean, no, right? No. So, Jub sent me this thing through, and it was um, big up Danai and Eccleton Eco- 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 Jarrett, right? Old Ty Eccleton, come right? on. Right, big time. Yeah. Big time reggae stars, right? Anyway, this he, is sent, huge, he, he sent dude. me a lick what they done of Baby, right? No. But it goes. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you how it goes, right? But it's sick, right? It is sick, right? Oh, God. Like you got so you got the you got Echo 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 and doing the proper vocals. He's not singing baby, he's singing to- something totally different, right? Right? And then you got Danai comes in with the DJ part. No. Nah. Right? So it's like, you know, like you've got the you've got me doing the vocals and mm. you doing the toasting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh right? my mate, when Jubes sent that to me, right? I said, Jubes, I ain't being funny, but this That's is sick. crazy. Right? So I done it. Went this isn't normal, is it? This is like this is total vote of confidence, man. Yeah, like, yeah, we're fuck, just we're man, just doing our own thing. You know what thing. I mean? I'm I'm not following no format. Yeah. We're just I'm just doing what we feel we should be doing, and that's what I feel I should be doing because I come from reggae yeah, anyway. Yeah. And you know it's what I mean? working. And I've always wanted to, but a lot of the a lot of the um, a lot of the people on that vibe, on the reggae thing, mm. you know, I wasn't really gelling with them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I had to wait. I have to wait for me to COVID help me a yeah. lot because now COVID was we was locked down now. So yeah. I'm just in front of my computer. You find your taste again. Yeah, you? finding out what does what. What if I turn that knob? Mm. What does it do and mm. all that? You know what I mean? Mm. So COVID helped me a lot. Mm. I mean, at my age, people think oh, you're too old to learn, but you're never too old yeah, to learn. Too you too know what I mean? Learn. And I love it. It's given yeah. me a another um, another lease of life, it's if you good, call yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, so we done the rhythm, and. Uh, that's why when I went to Toronto at the weekend, I was a bit upset because there weren't no beeline. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I played it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I played it anyway and it worked. It, it got the... The only thing I might have to do is shorten down the intro a bit. Road testing as your... Yeah, yeah. You have to road test. You know what I mean? You have to. You know what I mean? You know, so... Wow. The only thing I might do is shorten down the intro a bit. But apart from that, it worked. Everyone loved it. It got rewound and all that. And then we'd done the um, Juice Man, done the jungle version of it. Right? Oh, shit. Yeah. And so I had Juice's one as well. So what I'd done, I started with my version. And then two and a half later, hours <laughs> later, when I finished with my one, my last tune was Juice Man's version. You know oh. what I mean? And it went down the same way. You know what I mean? So Juice's version is whoa, jungle, jungle. Yeah, yeah, point, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You've cut so many chops. And that, this, this, this format almost epitomizes. You said, you said before that. You know, reggae. You come from reggae. That's your thing. However, I guess I guess a level of competence and hierarchy and all that sort of stuff comes into a scene, which essentially is closed doors. Like if you mm. if you know someone, you know someone. That's yeah. just the mark of a hip hop's the same as well. You have got to be in the know. But when you've got like the opening of all your groundwork in jungle, and you put this in, almost it it, it revitalizes an, a, yeah, an aspect. Yeah, you of, bring a new. You bring a new. Um... See, I can, I've always visualised the way that certain tunes are going to drop. Mm. How I'm going to be standing behind the decks to how the crowd's going to be reacting. Mm-hmm. I think about things like that when I'm making music, you know what I mean? What the crowd are going to do. Yeah, I'm thinking like, boy, when this bit comes in, they're going to just be, they're just going to be bubbling mm. neatly. Mm. They're not even going to know that this drop's coming, you know You're what I mean? thinking carnival right yeah. now. Yeah, and then when this drop comes Ooh. in there, it's a whole different, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, wow, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, that's the that's the vibe. I'm, I mean, you know, I don't drink. I don't get drunk. I have a little puff every now and again, mm-hmm. but I don't get drunk. I don't do nothing else. No, nothing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because, you know, 
I'm too old for that. Mm. And your punch card. I know my yeah, punch card's gone. <laughs> and like. <laughs> I just had enough of it, you know what I mean? Well, you're so, sick and tired of it. Yeah, right? so, you know, that was, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was fun, mm. but, you know, that's done, mm. right? So, now, nah, I'm just enjoying being in the studio, being able, just enjoying life, basically, mm. you know what I mean? But being in the studio and knowing that I've had one good tune come out on Chronic mm. and the follow-up is going to be just as good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kenny, but, um, man, it's honestly, it's... It's been a pleasure, brother. Yeah. Honestly, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. Yeah, I had to come up. I was upset that we couldn't make it before. Yeah. yeah. Because of personal shit, you know what I mean? But, you know, I came back from Canada yesterday and I was so tired, mm. right? She went straight to bed. I said, I'm not going to bed because if I get in that bed, I ain't waking up till whenever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I kind of kind of nodded off on the city, you know what I mean? Then I went to bed early last night. I got up at half five this morning, tired still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you wake up and you still want to go back to bed. Yeah, of course. After coming off like, yeah. the trip. But I just said, you know what, I'm staying up. Because I've got to do Killer Keller this morning. <laughs> right? My <laughs> right? guy. <laughs> right? Come on. Right? I've got to do Killer Keller this morning. That's yeah. what I'm saying, see? <laughs> you know what I mean? Dedication to the cause. <laughs> see, certain, certain <laughs> man you have to turn up for. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, man. My guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for passing through. No, it's been a blast, man. Yeah. It's been a blast. And and it's the train strike today. Yeah. And I've still got here. Still got here. So what's your excuse, yeah? You switch on and tune in and cop out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, inside the place. Brother, thank you so much for passing yeah, through. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. My God. Thanks for having me. And thanks that's for it. having me. And what do you want in your life, huh? Your week is now set, all right? Go and be inspired. Go and do something great. Get off the sofa. Stop watching me, for God's sake. Come and on. don't if forget, you... if you ain't bought Rhythm Up, <laughs> it's on all good um, um, platforms like Spotify and it iTunes is. and all that, right? It's on, it's on the Chronic label and it's Kenny Ken and Beat Merchants. Read them up. There it and is. watch out for the follow-up you soon. You've been warned. Yeah, you know, the, you know the coup, you know the strategies, you know what they're doing over here. No games, Kenny Ken and co., Killer Keller podcast, you know. Out was like in was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Uh, and yeah, more to come, all right? On the flip side, all right? So keep your eyes peeled, more on the way. Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Nice one, Ken. Boom. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tight.